the camera you use really doesn't matter. I know you've heard this again and again, gear doesn't matter. However, how you set up your gear really does impact how you're gonna be able to get the best looking footage when you're out filming. So in this video, I'm gonna go through my exact settings that I use when I'm out shooting with my Sony cameras to be able to get the cinematic look. I just got back from filming in Africa and we had a variety of Sony cameras with us. We had an A7C2, a ZV-E1, an FX3, and some A7Threes. And even though we had all of these different cameras, when it comes time to actually edit the footage together, all of it matches and it all looks really good. And here's just a quick sample of some of the footage from that documentary. What's crazy is that you can get a super cinematic shot in these tiny mirrorless cameras. And it really doesn't take much besides making sure your cameras are set up in the right way. So the first thing that you need to do is be shooting in log. So in Sony cameras, I make sure to always shoot in S-Log3. This is gonna give you more dynamic range so that when you get in your editing software, you can color grade your footage and get a much more cinematic look. So when you're shooting in log, it's a flat profile. So there's not as much contrast in the shot and there's not as much saturation. So when you're looking at this footage, it's just grayed out. However, because of that, your highlights are pulled down and your shadows are lifted. This allows you to be able to color grade back your skies and also the darker parts of your image so that you could create a look that specifically fits the video that you're working on. And for this project, I created a new LUT called Rwanda that I applied to all the footage from this trip. LUTs are an easy way to do a simple color grade and then all you have to do is some minor tweaks to get your footage looking perfect. And if you're interested in my set of cinematic LUTs to apply to your S-Log3 footage, then I'll include a link down below the description to where you can check them out. And I've added this Rwanda LUT into that pack. So if you've already purchased it, you can go back to the download page and you'll find a few additional LUTs in that pack. You want to avoid shooting in a standard profile and even the S Cinetone profile. It does look good straight out of camera. However, to get the most dynamic range, you're going to want to shoot in S Log 3. Now with whatever camera you're using, you're gonna to wanna to shoot at the highest resolution and highest megabits per second to be able to get the most out of your footage. So in something like the ZV-E1, I have 4K, 422, 10-bit at 100 megabits per second. This allows me to preserve the most amount of information out of the shot so that when I go into color grading, I'm gonna be able to push the colors even further without having weird artifacts in the footage and having banding in the sky. Now, if you have an older Sony camera and it only has 420 and 8-bit, that will still work fine. You just won't have as much range when you go into color grading to be able to push the colors around. However, you'll still be able to get a good looking shot when you're out filming. Now for your aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, you're gonna wanna control these manually. So for shutter speed, you're gonna want proper motion blur, which is double that of your frame rate. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, you're gonna wanna shoot at a 150th. And if you're shooting at 30 frames per second, you're gonna wanna use a shutter speed of 160th. This is gonna give you proper motion blur so your footage doesn't look too choppy. Now in terms of aperture, you're gonna to wanna to shoot wide open. And this also plays into your lens selection when you're out filming. Personally, I shoot with a 35 and a 50 millimeter at 1.4 so that I get super shallow depth of field and I have this more cinematic look. Now if you're using something like a 2.8 or an f4, you could still get cinematic looking footage. It just has a little bit of a different look than when you're shooting wide open at a 1.4. And I have another video where I compare all the different apertures in this range to be able to show you the difference in the look when you have lenses that open all the way up to a 1.4 or if they only open up to an f2.8 or f4. And I'll include that video in the description so you can check it out after this one. Now in terms of your ISO, it really depends on the camera that you're working with. Some cameras will get super noisy as you boost that ISO, whereas others like the ZV-1 or the FX3 have that dual native ISO where when you bump to the higher ISO, your image cleans up. 
So ideally, when you're working with your ISO, you just want the least amount of noise possible when you're out filming. And so typically, I'll just sit at the base ISO for whatever camera I'm working on, unless I'm in a situation where the light's fluctuating and I need to get more exposure out of the shot, then I'll boost the ISO. So in a Sony FX3, your base ISO is 800. The Sony ZV-E1 or the A7S 3s the base ISO is 640. So you'll just wanna look up what your base ISO is, and that's gonna be where your image is gonna be the cleanest with the least amount of noise. However, with the sensors that are available, you could boost this ISO and get a clean image up to 3200 or 6400, depending on which camera you're working on. So you're gonna have a lot of range to work with that ISO to be able to get the proper exposure when you're out filming. Now, when you're filming an S-Log3, you're gonna need to overexpose your footage. And the rule of thumb that I use when I'm filming S-Log3 is 1.3 stops over. And so either I'll adjust my ISO manually or I'll put it in auto ISO mode and I'll set my exposure compensation to plus 1.3 so that the camera can find the proper exposure to expose over by 1.3. There's no shame in using some of the auto modes when you're filming. A lot of times, especially when you're in a run and gun setting, it's easier to put it into auto ISO so that camera can decide what the best exposure is. And very rarely does it really affect the image to the point where I can't use a shot. What you're trying to avoid when you go full manual is fluctuations in the middle of a take. However, if you're shooting something consistent, well, it's not gonna change. And if you're shooting something with changing light, well, you'll want the camera to change. Otherwise, it might go too dark or too bright, depending on the scene that you're filming. It's really gonna be something that you're gonna have to play around with and figure out when the best times are to shoot in auto, versus manual. But if you're newer to filmmaking and you're really trying to dial in your settings, sometimes keeping an auto is gonna help to make sure that you always have a good shot and you're not missing your exposure, especially when you're shooting an S-Log3. Now when you talk about filtration in front of the lens, cause there's two different types of filters that I use when I'm out filming. The first is an ND filter. When you're using these settings for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO, it's gonna let a lot of light into your sensor. So you're gonna wanna put on an ND filter in front of your lens to be able to darken the image. ND filters are based basically sunglasses for your camera. And if you don't have an ND filter, you're gonna have to close down your aperture or boost your shutter speed to be able to get a proper exposure when you're outside in bright sunlight. So I always carry a set of ND filters whenever I'm out filming. Now the second filter I use is a diffusion filter. This is gonna soften up your image and also give you some halation in your highlights. So you'll see this blooming effect that are in the highlights that are in the shot. And using a diffusion filter will a lot of times give you more of this cinematic look because everything's not so perfect. And sometimes it looks too clean and too sharp and that's where a diffusion filter comes in that makes it feel just a little bit softer and just not so perfect. And it's as simple as that. These are the settings I use to get the most cinematic look out of these tiny cameras. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can learn more about how to get the cinematic look with any camera that you're working on. And if you're someone who wants to learn how to be a creator, then check out the Creator Film School. This is my course series where I teach you everything that I've learned on how to be a creator. We go through filming, editing, storytelling, how to grow a channel, and most important, how to monetize so you can keep doing this consistent year after year. And next, you should check out this video right here, which is a behind the scenes of making a film using these settings. I'll see you on the next one.